Hello everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video we're going to be using Houdini to create an asteroid. Let's get into it. So over in my object context, I'm going to press tab and type in geo to create a geo node. Press enter, enter again, enter again, and we're inside the geo node. And I'm going to drop down a sphere by pressing tab, typing the word sphere, pressing enter, enter. And now we have our sphere. I'm going to change the primitive type from primitive to polygon. And I'd like to have a little bit more polygon detail here, so I'm going to change the frequency from 2 to 10. Lovely if we were making a planet, but uh, I want to make an asteroid, so we're, we're, that's what we're doing. So let's elongate this. And so I'm going to use a transform node to do that. So I'll press tab, start typing the word transform. And if I can type it correctly, and then I have it there prompted. I'll press shift and enter, and it'll connect it up to the previous node and move the display flag down to the transform node. Beautiful. Now, this is still looking like a planet. We need to say, hey, what axis do we want to elongate this on? I would like to elongate this on the z-axis. So under my scale, I'm going to x, y, z, and just double the length. Beautiful. That is an asteroid that's a little bit too smooth, if you ask me. So if we want to quickly and easily roughen that up, we can add a mountain sop. So I'm going to press tab and type mountain, or start typing it, and it gets brought up as a suggestion shift enter there it is that's looking pretty good and i already like that i'm just going to leave that but you can dial in some some other heightened element sizes if you like so the next thing is i want to create some some pockets or some some little holes like some meteoric impacts happen on this asteroid so i need to create some points derived from this shape and then assign spheres to those points and subtract them from this asteroid body so to do that let's begin by converting this into points. So I can do that by uh, creating a scatter node and pressing shift enter to connect it to the previous node. And now we have our points in the shape of that asteroid body. Lovely. And you can see they're just on the surface there. Could be a little bit hard to see. So with that done, all right, how do we copy geometry onto these points? Well, we can do that with a, a sphere or sorry, a copy to points node. So I'm going to press tab and type ctp or write copy to points and press shift enter all right now we can see there's a little error here and that is because the scatter has gone into this input which is the geometry to copy to the um to the points and this is there's no geometry here this is just points but you can see here these are the target points that we want to copy to so we actually want to wire this in here and just disconnect holding y We'll disconnect that wire. Okay, so now we want to create a sphere to connect, copy to these points. So I'm going to press tab, type sphere, press enter, enter again, and click and drag this sphere into our copy to points. So we've got the geometry, but it's just a mess. So what I'm going to do is select the sphere and reduce this uniform scale to a value that I think looks good, maybe 0.1. All right, now that's nice, except uh, there's, there's too many points here. So I'm going to go back to my scatter node and say the force total count shouldn't be a thousand, but let's go with a hundred. I like that. I like that a lot. Now the next thing is I need to, I think, vary the the size of these points because they're just looking like well, they're all uniform, which is very unrealistic. So what I'm gonna do is say, hey, these points that I've created here with the scatter node actually have some attributes, and you can see what attributes they're carrying over here in the node info. And so right now, you'll see that the there's one point attribute, and that is the position. And that consists of three float values that define the position. And we can see that in our geometry spreadsheet, which is not up here right now. So I'll click the plus tab, say new pane tab type, and come down to inspectors, geometry spreadsheet. All right, cool. Now, it was saying, hey, there was... Let's see what that was again. So under the, clicking the I, you can see that there is one point attribute that is a position and it consists of three float values. So there is position for X, Y, and Z, and they all have float values. Cool, so what other attributes can we add in here? Well, what about we change the scale? I'll go back to my scene view here. I wanna randomize the scale of these points and then have that propagate onto these spheres that get copied onto the points. So to do that, I can press tab and type point wrangle, and this node, press enter and drop it down. It didn't quite connect up. So I'll just drag it around a bit till I see the suggested connection come up and that works well. 
And now what I can do in this point wrangle is type a little vex expression. And I'm going to say at the p scale, that's what I want to control, right? The particle scale or the point scale, sorry. And I want to make it a random value that is based on the point number. And this point number is also an attribute. So I have to go and reference that like so. With that done, press control enter. And you can see that all of these points have actually had values associated with their P scale. And so we can see that if we come down here and we look at the info, there is now two point attributes, the position and the P scale, which is a float. And if we go over to a geometry spreadsheet, we can see that this P scale has a variety of values between zero and one. And that's now propagating through to the geometry as a multiplier. Um, all right, so we've got that, but we've lost our asteroid. So let's uh, bring that back. So I'll press tab and create a merge node. Now, if I create a merge node, I can drag in our points here. And I can also say the last point that I had a version of the asteroid was this mountain. So I'll click and drag that in and move my display flag down to the merge node. Okay, I've got them both now and that be, could be good if I wanted to scatter items across the surface, but I want to subtract them. So instead of using a merge node, I'm going to use a Boolean node. So I'll remove that merge node by pressing delete on it. Press tab and choose Boolean. Enter, enter. And you can see here, there's a required geometry A, which will be the points or these spheres that I like to subtract. And then I'll bring down this asteroid body and move my display flag down to the Boolean. Now we can see why is there no subtract happening, A minus B, right? Nothing looks like it has changed. And the reason is that these spheres are a primitive type rather than a polygon. So I'm gonna go over to my sphere. You can see the primitive type is set to a primitive and change that to a polygon. Now, all of a sudden, we're subtracting that asteroid body from these spheres. Great. I'll go back to my Boolean. And that's the inverse operation that I'm looking to achieve. So I'm going to change my subtract from A minus B to B minus A. Splendid. Now with that, I just want to add a little bit more detail to the surface here. And then I think that we just need to maybe add a bit more roughness. So let's do that. So I'm going to go and tab and to get a bit more detail, I'm going to use a remesh node. And this will let us basically remesh the entire geometry in this case. And you can see that it's defined by an element sizing. So it looks to create a uniform length of polygon at this target size of 0.2 units. And so all I need to do is to drop that down and you can see that we're getting finer and finer detail. And you don't want to go too crazy with this. But now I've recovered a lot of those holes and I have more detail across the entire asteroid. Cool. So the next thing to do here is to say, I want to go and add some surface detail here, but I need to even smooth this out a little bit more. So I'm going to use a subdivide, All right? Pressing tab, typing the word subdivide, pressing enter. And I'm just going to click and drag this remesh in here, move my display flag down to subdivide. Looking pretty good. And I would just like to see the actual geometry here. So I'll press Shift W to hide the wireframe. And now I can just go and say, let's add another mountain sop. So I'll press Tab, type the word mountain, press Shift Enter to connect it to the previous one. And you can see this is perhaps a little bit uh, <coughs> over eager, overzealous. So I'll reduce the height to maybe 0.1 and the element size to 0.1 or perhaps 0.2. Yeah, that looks that looks quite good to me. I'd like a, even a little bit more detail in this one. So I'll select that sub subdivide, pardon me, and choose depth of two. And now I have some detail. Now that's looking, um, yeah, that's looking like a serviceable asteroid. I, I'd mine some gold from that one. So uh, if you want to get it to look a little bit cooler in the scene, well, we can do that. We can have our cursor over the scene here and press D on the keyboard, change the background and we say the color scheme is going to be instead of a light, let's make it dark. That looks good. Okay, okay. Close that. Let's turn off the grid. And the lighting, I'm not, I'm not completely convinced. So um, let's go over to our lights, create an area light. And I'll just drop it down. And uh, yeah, I think that's looking like a pretty good location. Maybe I'll drag it away a little bit. And I want to make it 
larger. So under the area light options over here, I'm just going to change the area size to two. And not going to make too much difference. That looks quite good. Maybe I'll rotate a little bit. Lovely. Now, some other strange things happening here. I've got this gray that is kind of like an ambient light or a fill light. And you can see even if I change my viewport modes here and I go all the way up to the high quality lighting with shadows, it's not quite what I'm after. So what I'm going to do is press D again with my cursor over the viewport window and change my lights here. And you can see at the moment that if I come over to turn off my emission, it's actually going to cast this area into complete darkness. That's lovely. The other thing that I want to do is to add a little bit more detail in some of these um, kind of areas that are hard for the light to reach. So I'm going to turn on my ambient occlusion. You can see those little um, features popping out a little bit more, which is nice. And the other thing is the shadow quality. I can change it from anti-alias point to area and it's just looking juicy now. So terrific. I like juicy. I'm going to say save as default. Okay, close that. And the last thing we want to show off our effort is to uh, maybe just have it spinning around. So let's go ahead and grab this geo and we'll, we'll jump in. And down here at the bottom, let's add another transform node and rotate it. So I'm going to press tab and type transform, enter, enter, connect it in, move our display flag down to this transform. And I want to rotate it around on the Y axis. And every frame, I want it to rotate one degree. And so there's a, a cool little way that I can do that. And that is over here on the rotate, I go from X to Y. And I say dollar sign frame. And so what that's going to do is that every frame, whatever the frame number is at one, it's going to make this value of rotation one. And you can see that if I drag this playhead, it's rotating that asteroid dependent on the time. So if you want to have a cool little looped animation, it's going to take 360 degrees to loop all the way around. So I'm going to change my time slider range to 360 and make sure that's all viewable. And make, press up. So I'm in the object context, deselect everything. And I'll just have a nice little view. And there it is. All right, I hope that helps. I'll see you in another video.